Today, we're going to add sound and music to a JavaScript game. And to do that, we're going to use a library called Howler.js. Howler makes it quick and easy to add audio to your JavaScript project. Uh, it does support all major web browsers. It's an open source project. Uh, but if you want to wrap your JavaScript game as a standalone app, maybe with something like Electron, Howler works great for that too. Before we get started here, quick reminder that I upload JavaScript game dev tutorials and other language game dev tutorials to this YouTube channel. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, please subscribe. Now let's take a quick look at the demo code for today's video. Here I've made a quick scene and just some CSS and SVGs. Uh, I've got two gamepad looking buttons up here. These are just button tags and they have SVGs inside them to kind of look like gamepad buttons. Closing out of that. I have a character down here, and the character is wired up with some CSS animations that we've covered in previous videos. And if I expand the JavaScript section here and go down to the bottom, you see that there's a little bit of code here set up to grab the character as a DOM element. And on those buttons, button A, button B, I have some click handlers that will fire an animation on the player element. So that looks like this. When I click A, he kind of pushes forward, and when I click B, he does a little running animation in place. Now our objective today is going to be adding sound effects to these actions to make the game feel way more alive. So the first thing I'm going to do is include the Howler.js library into our page here. So just by opening the HTML section, I'm going to come to the top and paste in a script tag. I got this script tag from CDN.js. Howler's website links directly to it. If your project is using something like CommonJS, maybe with NPM, Howler supports that too. All of the instructions for that are listed on their website, and you can find that link in the description below. Now that the library is being loaded on our page, we have access to the Howl class. And so I'm going to come down here to our JavaScript section and go to the top and start adding some code. Now, in my projects, I found a really good way to work with sound effects is to sort of keep them in one large bucket. And what I'm going to do is make a new object called sound effects, SFX. In here, I'm going to add our first sound effect, and that's going to be the one that happens when the character pushes forward. So I'll call it push. And push is going to be a new howl. And in howl, you pass a configuration object. Now, the first thing we need to give our object is a source. And the source is going to be the path to the actual sound effect asset file that we want to play. And so I'll just paste one in here that I have pre-prepared. Now, I've hosted this particular asset on CodePen. For you, it may look more like this, like a relative path within your local project. It just kind of depends how you're hosting your assets. Going back from that, one thing you'll quickly notice from Howler's documentation is that they actually recommend instead of passing a string for source, you pass an array. And what that allows us to do is actually provide multiple versions of the same asset for browser support. And so say I have the same sound effect, but maybe the browser I'm in doesn't support MP3. Well, I can come down here and maybe also supply a wave version. So when Howler tries to play the sound effect, it's going to match the first compatible one for you. So you don't have to worry about it and just play that. I will say that in my experience, just using MP3 has been totally fine for JavaScript games, but there are trade-offs to the different file types. Now that we've created our first sound effect, let's wire it up to actually be used on button click. And so down here, I have my character code. There's two methods, push and boost. Those both correlate to the different animations we have going on. So in the push code, that's what happens when you press the A button here, we have some code that says if the element already contains the pushing class, just stop here, don't do anything. Otherwise, we can continue. And in that case, we're going to add the pushing class and then basically remove it after a little bit of a timeout so that the animation can reset properly. So right above this line where we add the class and start the animation, I'm going to say sfx.push, and then I'm going to say .play. And this method was given to us by Howler.js. Now, when I click the A button, you can hear that the sound effect fires right when the animation starts. Now let's add a second sound effect to our boost animation here. So I'll come back up to our sound effects bucket, and in here I'm going to go ahead and add another one. So we'll call this one boost, and that's again new howl, same as before. Configuration object, source, this time I'm going to paste in a different asset. Now I previously had named this asset level up, even though we're not really using it in a level up context. Uh, just feel free to ignore that. That's just kind of what came to my mind when I heard the sound effect. Now let's take a second here to explore some of the other things we can pass into our Howl configuration. For one, if you want your sound effect to loop, there's a flag called loop, and so that can be true or false. It defaults to false. I'll go ahead and put that as false for now. We also have an on end callback. So this function will fire as soon as this sound effect is done playing. 
Uh, so maybe if you had chain sound effects and you want to fire one and then fire a different one right when that first one is complete, on end would be really good for that. Another really cool use case for on end is if you're playing a song and maybe that song has a little bit of an intro, but you don't want that intro part to repeat as the song loops, you can separate that intro into its own howl and then use on end to fire the body of the song. More on music in a second here. Now let's go ahead and hear this one. So I'll come down to my boost method and just like before, we're gonna wire it up in the same way. So SFX dot, this one's called boost dot play. And now when I hit the B button, which again is wired up down here, button, click, B, player.boost, you can hear that the sound effect plays. And just for fun, to be a little obnoxious, let's go ahead and try it out with the loop true. So now when I play the sound effect, it will continue playing. Now let's explore adding some music to our game. And so just like the sound effects bucket here, I'm gonna create a different bucket called music. And so the keys in this object here are gonna be kind of the names of the songs. So here I'll say our overworld song is a new howl. And this is really gonna look just like our sound effects configs. So here I'm gonna paste in a source. Now Howler provides a different flag for automatically playing the, the song or the sound effect as soon as it's loaded. And so that's autoplay true. And you'd think that would be a really good fit for music, background music, to just kind of start whenever the game boots up. But there's a little bit of a gotcha, and that gotcha is that a few years ago, a browser started putting a security thing in place where the browser's not allowed to fire sound effects unless the user has explicitly interacted with the page, like with a key down or a click. And so now you can see when I interact with the page at all, like I just click on something, the music will start playing. So a good way to mitigate this is actually to have something like a start game button that lives on your page. And the idea is that the user has to click that before the game will start. That click can kind of serve as that one interaction you need to actually be able to play sound effects. So the way we achieve this in Danger Crew, our JavaScript game we have on Steam, is by hiding a click event in the title screen. So when the game boots up, the user has to click either new game or continue game. So when the first scene loads, music is free to automatically start playing. So all that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this autoplay flag and instead wire up our music to be played by button clicks. So I'll come into our HTML section up here and just at the very top, gonna to paste in two buttons, play music and stop music. Coming back to our JavaScript, let's go ahead and wire up the click bindings for those new buttons. And so I'll say document.query selector, play music button, we're gonna add an event listener click and when that click happens we can go ahead and say music.overworld.play and now I can click this button and music will start playing but there's a problem because if I click it multiple times it'll keep playing so that's annoying we don't want that Howler gives us a method to check if music is already playing. And so we can use that in our click handler here. We'll say if not music.overworld.playing, then go ahead and fire off the play. And now this click handler will only work once when the music is not playing. Now let's go ahead and wire up the stop button. And so to do that, it's gonna look almost the exact same as this play music button. So we can copy a lot of this over. We'll get rid of this check and bind it to the stop music button. And now in this one, instead of music.overworld.play, we can say music.overworld.stop. And so now when the music's playing, the stop button will stop it altogether. And if I play it again, it's gonna start from the beginning. But say we want to just pause the music and not reset where it plays from. Instead of dot stop, we can say dot pause. And now when I play the music, I can pause it and then resume it by hitting play again. And you can hear that it's preserving the position that it was paused at. Uh, so this is good for like resuming music, maybe in a pause screen or something like that. Now there's one more slightly advanced concept I want to talk about with HowlerJS, and that's sound sprites. 
if you have many, many, many sound effects in your game, and again, you're serving it over the web, it sometimes makes more sense to take all of your sound effects and consolidate them into one audio file. From there, you can just load the one audio file and then tell Howler where the slices are within the file. The benefit here is that the user's browser will only have to download the one audio file and then have access to many different sound effects inside it. The trade-off though is that these sound sprite files take way more maintenance. So if you want to edit a sound effect in your game or maybe add a new one or change the length of one, you're going to have to come into Howler and update that configuration every single time. For many games, using sound sprites may be premature optimization. For example, on our Electron game that we have on Steam, we found that we didn't really need to do that because all of the audio files were hosted from the local application anyway. Your project may definitely benefit from some of that optimization though. Uh, so if you're interested in that, there's more information in the description below. And with that, I think you have everything you need to know to start adding music and sound effects to your JavaScript game. Thank you so much for watching this video to the end. If you got some value out of it, I really appreciate it when you hit the like button. And if you're working on a game right now, you should join our Discord. We have a really supportive group of people that are making and playing indie games. So if you have a project in the works, pop in there, tell us about it. We'd love to see you there. Thanks so much, everybody. Catch you next time.